After years of some players asking for harder Overland content, Necron released with some tougher world bosses to scratch that itch. There are usually one or two in each zone that stand above the rest when you're looking for a challenge, but the majority of them in Necrom are pretty tough. If you're struggling to find a group, the mechanics can be an additional issue to face. So let's take a look at what's involved for each of them in order of difficulty. The first one is Corliss the Chainmaker. This world boss starts with two waves of smaller enemies that must be defeated before the boss will even show up. And when he does show up, he spawns with an Argonian behemoth that attacks with heavy hits and fiery breath. Corliss himself hits pretty hard, has chains that can pull you into him, and creates a path like AoE where he will roll into you. In this fight, you should focus on the behemoth first while avoiding attacks from Corliss. With the behemoth gone, you can easily defeat him. I find this to be the easiest and most soloable of the Necrom world bosses. Falconaz Deck is a Dramora who summons enemies to aid him in battle, the most damaging of them being the bow wielders. When he calls in his adds, there is a momentary delay before he becomes invulnerable to attacks. When this happens, you should focus the adds until they are gone. Then he will unshield and you can rinse and repeat. He also occasionally summons Lightning Cloud AoEs. Avoid them when you can. This boss is similar to the last one in terms of difficulty, but the rest of the world bosses in Necron kick up the difficulty quite a bit. Next up is the Prime Cataloger fight, which can be a little chaotic, with tons of adds being summoned to aid him in battle, and damaging whirlwinds of books that circle the room. You should try to keep his adds to a minimum and avoid the AoEs when you can. At about 75% and 35% health, he will split into four shaded versions of himself. During these unskippable phases, you want to attack the unshielded copies. You have limited time to do damage before the shield comes back, and then another of his copies will drop its shield. When all of his copies are dead, the boss returns and you can focus your damage back on him. This fight takes much more time to complete because of these phases. And since they can't be skipped, it guarantees to be a marathon, not a sprint type of fight. This next one is also very chaotic, leaving little room for error. Vrokul Shah is a large lurker who spits poison, summons tendrils that deal some fast acting AOE damage, and summons smaller lurkers to help him in battle. The best advice here is to keep moving to avoid as many of the AoEs as you can and keep the number of adds in the fight to a minimum. There can be a lot going on at one time, but the most important thing is awareness of where not to stand. Rune Master Ziomara uses Arcanist abilities, launching runes and teleporting around the room, but also creates poison AoEs and has a couple of wipe-worthy mechanics. Keep in mind that the outside edges of the room will do damage if you venture off the platform, so when you're avoiding AoEs, do not leave the ring. The Rune Master also summons Abyssal Tendrils at your feet and a Shard of Chaos. The Shard of Chaos will shoot projectiles at everyone until it is destroyed, and it deals some hard-hitting damage that seemingly increases the longer the Shard is up. The boss is also completely invulnerable to attack while the shard is up, so you should focus all of your attention on the two smaller shards to unshield the big one, and then focus that center shard to destroy it before you return your attention back to the Rune Master. If he starts channeling, interrupt him with a shield bash. This can happen even when he is shielded. You'll see the red lines coming off of him and a green book over his head. The phases in this fight can be skippable when there are a ton of people, but I have seen so many groups wipe here from these two mechanics. If you're watching for both, this fight shouldn't be too terrible. And that leaves us with the most difficult world boss in Necrom. The Walking Nightmare takes the top spot. This boss is very unforgiving if you're not paying attention. 
He summons enemies to aid him in battle, has a tongue attack that pulls you to him, and he periodically runs across the room, leaving shock and poison aliens in his path that you should definitely avoid. During battle, some of the adds will channel a shield around the boss that can't be interrupted. As soon as you spot the channeling enemies, turn your attention on them. Throughout this fight, you should take out the adds to keep the room chaos down. Keep moving to avoid the AoEs and watch for blocks and interrupts if you're being targeted. As time goes on and more content comes out, it can get even harder to find a group to complete the bosses. So I hope that knowing the mechanics helps you to feel better equipped to fight them, especially when you don't have a big group.